Greetings to all of humanity's real joy. It's a pleasure, it's my honor, as usual, to be greeting you and always bring this message of emancipation to you, whereby I'm pointing you to look no other place but to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. And this was also what Abdullah would have taught Neville Garden, how to look inwardly to discover his true identity. And when he proved that his true identity is his divinity that he was supposed to teach this truth to the rest of humanity. Thus, the reason why Abdullah taught Neville Gadel how to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And that is what I want to speak to you about today. How to live in the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Now, as you know, we all have desires in life. There are things we'd like to achieve. And everyone has some desire or some goal, some dream that they would like to see fulfilled in their life. And we see in Neville's case that his desire was to travel to Barbados for the Christmas holidays to spend such a time with his family having left Barbados over 12 years ago to pursue a, a career in America and was away from his family he had this longing desire to be with them once more for a while and Abdullah who knew the secret of the Bible and that the central character of the Bible was man's imagination. He taught Neville how the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically, and that the Bible is the autobiography of humanity. Therefore, he points Neville to look inwardly and to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So he said to Neville, what you're going to do is that you're going to go to bed every night and as you go off to sleep, you're going to imagine yourself in your mother's home and you're going to have that feeling that you would feel knowing that you're in your mother's home and you're sleeping in a certain room in your mother's home. And you're going to go to bed and fall asleep in that feeling of that wish being, de being desired, uh, uh, being fulfilled, sorry. Okay, and he also said to Neville, you know how Barbados is looking and you know the streets and the buildings in Barbados. Now, each and every day, you're going to walk the street of New York. You're going to walk the streets of New York in the feeling that you're walking the streets of Barbados. You're going to see the buildings of New York as the buildings in Barbados. And so Neville was always mindful of living in the feeling of his wish fulfilled. Seeing Barbados in his mind's eye even when he walked the streets of New York. And seeing the streets of Barbados in his mind's eye while he was walking the streets of New York. Teaching you that when you have the feeling and you take that feeling and intertwine that feeling with the supernatural sight of the mind's eye where you see things through your mind's eye and not what your physical sight is saying to you or telling you. You're listening to that inner voice in you and you're directing your path from within. So in order for you to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled, you have to live within and understand that everything you see without, it is within. You have to live with the understanding of as above, so below. 
as it is within, so is it without. And you have to live with the understanding that Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and 11 is teaching you that the world exists within you when it says that God has placed the world in the mind of man. You have to understand, just as you look at a, a flash drive and you do not see what is downloaded in that flash drive, but if you plug that flash drive into a computer, it will reveal all the things that is downloaded in that flash drive. So you have to realize that everything is downloaded in you, but you have to understand everything is energy, vibration, and frequency. Therefore, if you want to have the experience of contacting that which is within you with the five senses, you would have to understand what it means when it says in the Bible that the word became flesh and we handled him. You would realize that a word is a thought express and also realize that there can be no action that wasn't forced a thought. So everything is an expression of that which is within. And you cannot do it without using the feeling. That is why your heart is very important to manifest your reality consciously for you must connect your heart with the brain because the brain is a transmitter and a receiver of frequency and you must send out the thought frequency and you're told that my words will not return unto me void but it will accomplish that which I send it to and perhaps many things where to I would have sent it and that is saying to you that your words are actually your thoughts. And when you express them, that expression, it is a vibrational frequency. And as you sow, so shall you reap. So my brother and my sisters, Abdullah taught Neville Garden that one of the most important thing is to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled because feeling always brings the blessing. And so when you look at the Bible from the psychological way that it should be understood, you would realize that the stories that were written in the Bible, that they are all parabolic and they are to teach you how to fulfill your every desire in this world. So you realize the story of Isa and Jacob where it says that Isaac was blind, that it is speaking of your subconscious mind that is impartial. Your subconscious mind doesn't see you from the realm of judgment, but from the realm of feeling. And that is why it says that Isaac said to his son, come close that I may feel you. It is you bringing that which you so desire, bringing it close into your mind's eye, having a vivid imagination and seeing it in your mind's eye and having that feeling of your wish fulfilled so that it would be objectified into this three-dimensional world. And that is why it would mean that you would have received the blessing. It even says that Isaac smell J Jacob and say that the smell of Jacob was the smell of Esau and Esau represents the outer self which is the outer hairy man that's why it says that Jacob that Esau was the hairy man and Jacob was a smooth man which is speaking of your inner man and your outer man your conscious and your subconscious mind okay and it says that he smell him so you have to realize that these senses that you have like feeling and, and, and smelling and touching and so on that you can use these same senses within the sixth sense which is the super sense which is your true essence and have that feeling that you are doing these things in the physical realm having an understanding that the physical realm is an expression of the inner realm. The sixth sense being your true sense, your God sense, 
a higher sense. Okay, so my brother and my sisters, never forget to live in the feeling of your wish fulfilled. You cannot have self-doubt and live in the feeling of your wish fulfilled. You cannot be living in fear and having the feeling of your wish fulfilled. You cannot believe in a power outside of yourself and hold to that wish, that feeling, sorry, of your wish fulfilled. When you have the right understanding of your true self and you believe that God is truly your imagination and that without imagination isn't anything made that was made and all things that was ever made, it was first imagined. When you understand that is written in St. John 1 and 3 where it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And you understand that him to be a personification of your own human imagination. You will realize that you must have total faith in your higher self, in your true self. And that is why you're told to examine yourself, to test yourself, see if you're in faith or not. And that is written in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Where it says, don't you know your own self? That Jesus Christ is in you? Now, when you realize that Jesus Christ represents your imagination, the Christ man, the creator in man, for the eternal body of man is the imagination, and that is God himself. When you realize that, then you will realize who is the creator, and you would live in the feeling of your wish fulfilled because of that knowing, because of that awareness, knowing that consciousness is the only reality. You're living from the realm of consciousness, which is your true self, your true essence, for it is the only reality and everything else is illusionary. So you not looking to the illusionary world, you're looking first to the real world which is your true self, your true essence. That is why you're told in, in Luke 17, 21, not to let any man deceive you or brainwash you by saying to you, look here, I'll look there. Do not let anyone point you to look outside of yourself or to believe in anything outside of yourself. For the kingdom of God is within you. Therefore, you must seek first the kingdom of God. You must seek your higher self first. You must learn to know yourself first. And when you discover your true self or your true essence, when you discover who you are, when you discover your true identity, you will discover the secret of creation and you'll be able to create your reality consciously. That is in Matthew six thirty three, where he says that all these things will be added unto you. So here, Abdullah was teaching Neville Gallet the meaning of all of these scriptures and teaching him how they are all parabolic and how it, they, were, they were all written symbolically. And so he taught Neville how to believe in himself, how to embrace himself, how to live his self-esteem and how to get rid of all inferiority complex and live in his true self. So my brother and my sisters, that what I'm, what I'm doing here right now is encouraging you to live in the realm of your higher self by activating the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Get in touch with that feeling. Get in touch with your heart. Vibrate from that realm of feeling. Activate that energy. Get it in motion. Get into that emotion. Be emotional about that which you so desire. Because you have that desire in you. Because your intention is to be a value to humanity. Is to use that power to be a light in the world. It is to reach out. To help others so we all can grow together knowing that there is only one universal consciousness. Knowing that we are one. And knowing that it is only God in the world. And everyone is yourself pushed out. Everyone 
is a just another version of yourself and you're beholding yourself and you want the best for yourself for no man would hate himself and that is why this this same mystery is given in ephesians chapter 5 as marriage which is a union and is christ and the church is not an outer ceremony but it's a inner connection it's a inner union a oneness to so my brother and my sisters and you know how many people that be very much so joyful when they get into that marriage that the system actually give to them whereby they have to sign a piece of paper and they have to pay the government money how much more we have to be happy and have the feeling inwardly when we know that true marriage is inwardly bringing our thoughts and our desires and going into meditation and bringing that 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 thought and that desire with feeling and emotion to make our dreams a reality so my brother and my sister this is time for you to turn water into wine so with that being said my brother and my sisters i hope that you've been encouraged and I'm saying to you to have the right feeling, have the right thoughts towards yourself and toward others. And always remember to live in the feeling of your wish fulfilled. And it would be objectified in your world. And you would live the life that you so desire to live. So with my brother, so with that being said, my brother, my sisters, I want to thank you very much. I don't want to say to you, if this is the very first time that you listen to me and what I'm saying, it really makes sense to you. It's really resonating with you. If you haven't subscribed already, I'm encouraging you to subscribe, to like, to comment, uh, to share this video. Now, just before I leave you, I just want to remind you that this message I bring to you, that it is the single eye message of self-realization, of which Matthew six twenty two says that if I be single, your whole body would be full of light. And my brother and my sister, hadn't it been that what I've just quoted to you has been my experience, I wouldn't have been here bringing this message to you. For when the single eye opened within me, my whole body was filled with light. But first of all, I would have experienced that great and mighty shaking. And then I would have heard the mighty rushing wind. And that eye opened with me and I ascend like a fiery being. And come to understand that when the Bible says that you shall change from mortal to immortality in a twinkle of an eye, that that twinkle of an eye is an opening of an eye where you will awake from the dream of life. And you will come out of your skull. You definitely burst your crown chakra and come to realize the resurrection and the virgin birth and all of these things and come to realize that your body is the tomb in which Christ is buried and your skull is Galgotha. That's the reason why my brother and my sister always put my hand right above my crown chakra and give you the symbol of the single eye and say to you, do not let anyone brainwash or deceive you to make you believe that the eye above the pyramid and the US dollar, it's an evil symbol. It, it No, it is the symbol of the all-seeing eye of God in you, who is your imagination, for you would have an awakened imagination and come to realize that that experience is the rising of the S-U-N in a S-O-N and that it is the dawning of a new day in your life. Also, you'll realize that the eye is the eye of the mystics, the seers, the prophets. Those who will vibrate beyond humanity and come into their divinity. That's the reason why when you have the experience of the S-U-N in a S-O-N, you will realize what it means when it says in Psalms 8 verse 11 that the Lord thy God is a son, as in a S-U-N, and a shield and no good thing which he withhold from you, then you will realize that the son truly have never withhold any good thing from humanity. For the son is what powers all of humanity and give all of humanity its energy. And why it is said also in Malachi chapter 4 and verses 2 that the son, as in the S-U-N, of righteousness shall arise in you with healing in his wings. And truly, the Son of Righteousness has risen in me, and I'm bringing healing to all of humanity, encouraging each and every one to use your mind power, which is your solar power, your sun power, your God power, your creative power, which is actually the sexual power. Use that power to achieve your every desire. 
But remember to always live in the feeling of your wish fulfilled. For that was what was taught to Neville Gather by our ancestor, Abdullah. So with that being said, I want to say peace, love you all, I'm out.